Well, let's speak, uh, changing subjects a little bit. So, Winks, yeah. uh, there's a, a really important one that it's a five mil clearance, air flow clearance, five mil around the wing. That's right. right? So, can you show us how, how different it is considering those five mil on the wing? Those five mil don't really apply on wing support structure, do they? No, no, it's a five millimeter cl um, clear airflow. Um, around the surface of the wing. Around the surface of the wing. Right. Between leading edge, trailing edge, and right round. Right. So you're going to show us one. I think this one will be an easy one to demonstrate. So you're going to use a 5 mil drill again? Uh, yes. Well, we, we can use a 5 millimeter drill and we put it right around there to see that there is airflow. And obviously with this one, we would check that there's airflow here at the back. But Something this year that's been brought in is there has to be five millimeter airflow as well between the wing and the track. So this is an older car and it's no reflection on the, the makers, but uh, this was at a different rule. This would now fail because the five millimeter drill will not pass underneath. On the wing, so on for example. Wing. For so, so there's, there's, there's an example of a rule who is uh, pushing on top of another wall. So you have the ground clearance one and a half, yeah. but then you but need to actually, comply having the wing five mil from the And floor. there is another rule as well that impinges on this, and that is um, the, the three millimeter clearance in front of the wheel. So there are occasions where you can get away with three millimeter clearance between right. the front wheel and the wing assembly. Yeah. And other occasions where you would need five mil. Uh, basically, if this is wing support, yeah, three millimeters. So it, wing support does not need to have five mil clearance. clearance. But the wing. if the wing, for example, came up to this location here, yeah, then it would have to be five mil. So there would have to go five millimeter clearance there at this point. Because we also have a rule where the wing cannot be fifteen mil. Um, Hi. to obstruct the wheel. 50 mil height to obstruct the visibility of That's the wheel, isn't under it? the wheel regulations. It says the wheel should be visible from 15 millimeters above. Can you so, show us this yeah, well, great this looking is, device? This is a height gauge uh, set to 15 millimeters and we just move it over the car like that and check that the wing is below 15 millimeters. And once again, Teams have to remember there is no tolerance here. This is an absolute dimension. So they need to have their wing assembly not higher than 10, 15. Well, 15 would be very dodgy when you pin. Careful when you go straight into the limit of the dimensions, yes. guys. So it would be wise to have it, say, 14, well, maybe 14.5 you might get away with, but it would need checked. The, the most important, I think, and I believe, is just check and double check before you submit your car into a competition, even if it's the regional, national, or world finals, well, just to prevent yes, that. I, I always remind teams of the amount of money this is costing to go to the world finals. And it's terrible to fail on something so simple, so simple. throw away marks. So of course, the teams receive points of the dimensions of the car, and there's a, a score sheet for that, yes. but the scrutineers give points on something else, that it's called the scrutineering judging scorecard, that focus on the engineering drawings, the renders, and the quality of finish and assembly. Yeah. So for example, just looking at the scorecard um, and renderings, it, it says, you need to have different views, a perfect match to the final car, including, including branding, environment, and lighting. So, in, especially in the regional level, teams forget to bring their technical drawings and their renderings, yes, and they're just losing points. You would be amazed at, at the number of teams that turn up and maybe only have one engineering drawing and no rendered drawings. They forget that you should have really engineering drawings of each component and an assembly drawing. As well. So if I have, if I'm, if I'm a member of a team and I'm handing over a, on, in my portfolio, in the cover there's a beautiful render of my car, and there's another render or, or a couple of renders inside of the portfolio, does that count as a, as a, a, a render submitted for scrutiny? Well, sometimes we have to look to find, I mean, it's not obvious. Ideally they should have separate 
documents yes. to hand over. To and the, the, in terms of con the environment, it should be a contextual type drawing, you know, in a, maybe two cars together on the track uh, with the decals and everything on. High quality. You'd be surprised some teams hand in something and really, really low resolution. So, so guys, this is a really an important tip because if you forget to bring us engineering drawings and renderings to receive points, that's 40 points that are up to grab with engineering, Which is with almost renders and engineering as much drawings. as the scrutineering process as well. Uh, and what about quality of finish and assembly? What's that a scrutineering judge looking for on, on quality and finish and assembly? Looking good finish on the paint, decals neatly applied, nice square, uh, well, the orientation of the graphics uh, clear to see, and uh, particularly underneath the car as well. And especially in the national final, world finals event, where teams submit two cars. Yeah. We're looking for them to be identical. We're looking them for to be identical. So you will not receive as many points if you have a beautiful car, but then the second car Cars doesn't have the same, uh, the same quality. And the same color scheme. And the same color scheme. Uh, so that's another we, 20 we, points. Yes, we, we've had teams submit one car, maybe black wheels, another one with red wheels. You know, they have to look the same. And that goes as well to spare parts. Spare parts, yeah. Because some teams submit spare uh, front wing or spare rear wing and they're not painted. So what the rule not, says needs not to be identical. They have to be painted, but they should be identical to what's on the car. So if you have logos on your front wings on the car, they should be on your spare ones as well. Because if you walk down the grid in, at a Grand Prix and you see the, the teams with all their wings nicely yeah. stacked up, they're not in plain carbon fiber. They're highly painted, exactly the same exactly. as what's on the car. And, and just to finalize the spare parts conversation, uh, of course there's in the regulations that teams can hand over spare parts, and a spare part, it's of course, if you have a damage on your, on your main part, you have parts that have been screwed to near that are ready to go. But what happens is, Lots of teams in regional, in regional, national and world finals level, they bring spare parts, but it's almost impossible to put those parts on the car, isn't it? Yes, uh, I've yet to see a wing fitted uh, within the time scale at the track. Because the wings are basically, in most, of, most occasions, super glued into the car. So if there's a damage into the car, that's where you can... Uh, go in and use your spare bit, but could you be have done a limit. service. It could be done at service. We have a limit time to do it, don't you? Yeah. So you cannot just spend the same hours that you've spent building your car before the event right. and expect to have the same amount of time during the event. So it needs to be a system of really kind of a, like in Formula One where they take quick, two or three seconds yeah, to I change don't. wheels and uh, tires and a wing. I have seen some teams with magnetic fitted rear wings. So that when it goes into the towels or the deceleration system, they come off and uh, they can just lift it and s sell it back on again. And it's back on in place as... That would um, be the idea, like, isn't it? If a team line. could get into, into his front damage wing, just remove it really quickly in a couple of seconds, just fit another one and it's ready to go and you're avoiding penalties and yes. the car is ready to go to the track again. If you have to get the super glue out, that probably results in the penalty as well as because yeah. of the time delay. Because it, seem, it may seem a little unfair, guys, why we put time restrictions to replace parts if a car suffers damage in, in the race, but the races need to go on, so the car needs to be constructed in a way where if you need to replace anything, it needs to be fast and effective. Yes. The same with wheels. You know, If you have to super glue your wheel on, then I don't really think that is a good engineering solution to mounting your wheel. Mm. It and should be a mechanical. And also the axles, isn't it? Some teams just opt to do an axle, a 3D printed axle, yes. and that can be extremely fragile. Yes, it depends on the, where the layer is, which direction the layers are going in. If you're doing an axle and you have the layers at right angles to the axis, then you know, you're likely going to suffer there because there's no strength at all. So one, really test your parts before you go into an event if you're going to do a special component, for example, 3D printed, just make sure it's going to be resistance enough to, to sustain 
uh, the number of, ra of races in a regional final, in a national final, they already have the knockout, and in the world finals the races uh, are That's even right. in a bigger number. So just to wrap up this video of hits and tips about scrutineering, guys, it's really important to have the right equipment to measure it. You can download the jigs to do a quick check, but it's not that expensive to get a caliper, a quality caliper uh, from Amazon or, or, or other places that you can buy. So this will also be really helpful for the teams to yes. check the measurements of their cars. Um, this particular one is slightly more expensive, this one is more I think expensive. that costs in a region of 30 they, But they can, they can measure, they can measure the, using the calipers just to make sure they're not failing any of, of the measurements. Um, so guys, it, it, there's, the rules and regulations are uh, really detailed and the objective of the scrutineers is to verify that your car is legal for the competition, for the competition to be fair, to be a, a, the same uh, level feel for all teams competing in, in the event before going into the track, but we don't want to restrict innovation. So yeah, make your cars innovative, um, explore the rules and regulations because our team of scrutineers is going to be here to check if they're yes. right. Uh, so I'm not going to say see you in a, a world finals event, I'm going to say see you in a future F1 in schools event and we look forward to seeing your work.